Namaste and welcome again to another edition of Live, Love, Engage. I am Gloria Grace Rand and today on the show I've got a awesome gentleman who I met a while back through a, um, it was like a networking event, I believe, sort of a big strategic alliance, I think something like that networking event. And um, I was immediately intrigued by um, just, just how he manages to balance things in his life, which was sort of what we're going to talk about in a minute. But first of all, I want to welcome uh, Josiah Philipson to Live, Love, and Gage. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm super excited to kind of chat and, and extend our conversation we had earlier. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, let me share with you a little bit about who this gentleman is. He is the owner of Next Tech Consultants, and his passion is to help business owners regain time through technology. And he believes that family, work, and personal life can and need to be balanced. And as a father of three boys, he understands this is not easy. But then again, nothing good in life ever comes easily. And But he still says that, you know, we need to work hard and grow in our relationships with our family and in our business. And I think that's a... Uh, Admirable, admirable um, mission, I guess, in life to do. And uh, certainly, yeah, as a father of three, I know that that can't be easy, especially over the last year and a half when we've had to deal with so many changes in our lives due to circumstances outside of our control with the, the pandemic and everything. But um, I thought we might start uh, with just a little, little bit more background on you on how you got interested in um, in your business and, and, and technology and all that fun stuff. Yeah, so for me, it was kind of unique. I started out actually as an elementary education teacher. Um, so <laughs> my my bachelor's is in elementary education with a middle level endorsement in math. Ah. Um, so kind of unique that way. I'm not like a computer engineer or electrical engineer. Um, but what I did was I helped teachers learn how to use technology in their class to really engage students. So it was back in 2007 or 2008 when the iPod first came out, I actually got a grant from Oregon to kind of say, hey, how can we use an iPod in a classroom to engage students? And it was kind of the, it was one of the more like first um, times that really brought that in a classroom. Like at that point in time, no one else in any of the classes had really iPads or iPods or anything like that. So we brought it in and that was kind of where my passion for technology came from. It was like, how do I use technology in a way that engages people mm -hmm. and just makes things a little bit easier? Um, and I think one of my big things, even in my, my grant proposal is like, we also have to make sure that we never expect technology to replace people. Because some people were like, well, technology is going to replace people in teaching. And I'm like, well, that's not true. And that should never be the goal because you need people. Absolutely. Yeah. So I kind of went there, taught for a little while. And even when I went into schools um, as a teacher, it be I be kind of became the help desk for a lot of the teachers. They asked me <laughs> questions because I was more personable than the IT department. <laughs> um so going yeah <laughs> i don't know why <laughs> yeah <laughs> what's i but, <IT> guys <laughs> oh yeah uh but then after that i got into i they cut the middle school program at the t at the school i was teaching at so i was like well what do i want to do i don't really want to keep teaching um but i want to what do i want to do um mm -hmm. so after that i found a job at george fox university kind of blended education and technology together mm. and i was their support desk for and then became a linux engineer for them and kind of helped manage their it department and grew um and then finally i decided about two years ago to quit that job and to take my consulting business full time mm. um and really, like you said earlier, like with my consulting business, it's really like I want to help businesses like I, I, my, I, I'm good at IT. So I use that as my tool to help people. But like I said, like you said earlier in the introduction, my passion is really like, how do I grow your business? How do I help you with that balance? Because in your life and your business, because I get it like it's not easy, but mm -hmm. it is something that's really important. 
And I think especially as a dad coming from that perspective, like where I think we talked a little bit in our conversation earlier about how in the US, there's not really a bar for being a dad. It's like, hey, mm -hmm. let's let's actually like set a bar where it's like, hey, I should do more than just show up. And it's not easy because you have to balance that full time job. You have to balance like, what do I do with my kids? And I and I get that struggle and I want to have those conversations in a way that's helpful for people. Because I think that conversation isn't really had out there that often. Yeah. And that's, that's, yeah. Now I, I really remember exactly what it was <laughs> about why we clicked. Because, yeah, that was the important thing, I think, is that, um, is that we, we don't hear too much about um, dads and, and how they can really help, um, help to be able to manage their businesses or manage even be, being an employee and being mm -hmm. able to manage raising a family as well. And because sometimes it seems like it's just, you know, gets put on the mom, but I know that there's a lot of dads out there that really want to be able to be of service to their families as well as their professional lives. Like, cause I've met them and they're amazing, amazing men. And, you know, and we yeah. need to encourage that. So it's great that you're helping uh, business owners in that. Um, now, you know, making that transition that you said from being, you know, more in the academic, academic arena, but you were still like on a help desk, but then going into starting your own firm, um, doing that full time was, um, what were the, the challenges, if any, in, in, in doing that? Yeah, uh, my wife and I have always been pretty business oriented. So like, even when we graduated in college, we, we started screen printing, I had a tutoring company, like, mm. so running our own business was always something that we wanted to do. Um, it gives you that flexibility. Like I can be home with the kids more. I, there are times entrepreneurs are the only people that will work 60 hours and get paid nothing. Yeah. So like we all get that too. Um, but it's it kind of that challenge was like, how do I like go from just being handed tasks and handing jobs in more of like a help desk or where there's already people there asking questions mm -hmm. to like, I don't have clients and how do I balance that and find clients or find people that not only like, because you can find people, but you also want to find the right people where it's like, hey, I, I don't want to if, if we're not going to click or work together well, it's not going to be a good relationship. Mm -hmm. So one realizing that was huge, like realizing like there are certain people that as an IT department, they have to be, we had a CIO come in to interview at George Fox one time. And he actually said a, a statement that was really kind of powerful to me. He said, you have your IT person, you have to have the most trust for because they have access to every system in your building, they can That's get fair. into your financial <laughs> records, they can get into everything. Yeah. So becoming an IT support person, what isn't all just about, hey, I know the technical stuff, which I do because I spent lots of years learning it, but it's more also about building that trust in that relationship with your customer or with a business of like, hey, you can trust me. And here's why. And kind of realizing that that's more of what the IT department needs, than saying, hey, I'm super skilled. And here's all my certifications. I mean, you can go to any IT company and get those. But like, what is the difference that really sets you apart? And that was kind of understanding that and building that gap and kind of making that message out there was probably the hardest part of like, mm -hmm. oh, it's not really just I'm doing IT. It's how do I get people to trust and understand what I'm doing so they don't have to worry about it? Yeah. Was was there a, a tipping point that you found where you were finally you were able to like really kind of relax into that and, and saying, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm confident. And, and then people started responding. I think it really like, um, there was a couple of tipping points in my business. Um, one was going full time and in that kind of decision where, Hey, I need to go full time. I was, when we talk about work life balance, I've, I've gone both ways where mm -hmm. I had no balance. Cause before I went full time, I was running a business, working a full time job, doing my MBA, <laughs> oh boy. taking my kids to these trips and doing these things where I was like, Oh, I'm doing great. I'm still involved. And then when I stepped back, I realized how little I was involved. Mm -hmm. And so that was a tipping point for me like two years ago. 
And then once, once the, so that's when that struggle really came of like, how do I make my message more available? Like I didn't even have a website for four years. Cause I was like, well, I don't need one. <laughs> um, <laughs> but for, for after that, it was kind of the, how do you, for me, the tipping point was really kind of that strategic alliance meeting that we had was mm -hmm. which uh, for me, I was like, oh, the meeting was interesting. It was really fun. It was great. But that meeting really kind of hearing from other people really helped me realize that's the major tipping point. That's what I'm missing in my messaging. Mm -hmm. um, I met with a couple of the coaches from there and they were like, well, why don't you say that more? Why don't you go out there and tell people because what and then they basically said what I said earlier is that everybody has certifications, but what you have is different. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, and that was kind of that tipping point of like, okay, how do I now make that message real? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And that's your, that's what differentiates you from other people and mm -hmm. from, from your competitors. And that's so important to be able to find that when you are, you know, starting a business and to be able to come up with that. So it's good that you were able to get some support on that and to be able to, you know, start doing that. Um, can you give an example of how maybe you've, how you've helped someone in their business and to be able to accomplish their goals? Because really it's like, when you talk about, you know, um, technology, it's like, it's such a broad category. So, <laughs> so give us a little, you know, taste for how, how you actually do help someone. Yeah. So there's, there's two people that really come to mind. And the first one, he's a coach. Um, and he emailed me and was like, my emails aren't going through. I don't know what to do. My computer, all of a sudden, everything was like crashing down. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was like, I understand, like, let's, let's have that conversation. Let's figure out where to go. So what we did was we set up his emails to where they were flowing securely. Mm -hmm. Um, I've talked a little bit about how there's two things that create spam or the most likely reasons why your messages go to spam. And so we mm -hmm. actually, that was why that's what was happening to him. Yeah. Um, and so I actually fixed those for him that day. Cause I was like, well, you need to be able to email. That's a pretty important thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so we fixed it that day. And then we kind of had the longer conversation of, okay, well, now what do we do with your computers? Your, your emails are flowing. So how do we manage your computers? How do we mm -hmm. make sure that they're secure? Um, how do we make sure you're not getting too much spam into your email? Mm -hmm. um, do you have a network at your business? And so we worked with him to really build that security because that was a big piece that he was missing. Mm -hmm. So we went in and we set up antivirus, we set up uh, spam and uh, malware filtering, even in cloud services like Dropbox um, mm -hmm. for him. And so we have these systems in place that are constantly scanning all of his files, his emails, um, his computer to make sure that it's healthy and that it's running properly. Um, so for him, that's what he needed. He needed that security and that peace of mind. And it took a while to get there, but we got there. It took about a month and a half when we got there and everything was set up and he felt comfortable again. Mm -hmm. And that was the the big relief for him to be like, okay, now I feel comfortable. Like, <laughs> and then, <laughs> yeah. And I think the other one I work with, uh, back in like education, I work with Head Start, mm -hmm. um, which is a really fun program. If you haven't heard of it, you should, it's in Oregon it's mainly. Uh, it's basically preschool age kids get a head start into school. So kind of mm -hmm. helping them um, get there. And so it's a really fun organization because for them as a larger organization, they really needed someone to come in and assess their current uh, assets and say, hey, where do we go in five years? Or what do, what's our plan moving forward? So really for them, what we did was like, we built out a five-year plan like, hey, this year you need to replace these min this many computers. Mm -hmm. This year you need to replace this. And then we kind of had that five-year plan of a computer rotation plus a network rotation because you, the worst thing that can happen is in five years, you don't have that plan. And all of a sudden you have to buy everything at once. Yeah, that's true. That's super costly. <laughs> Not going to be a good, <laughs> good deal. Yeah. No. It's, do you, um, do you work with like a, a specific type of business or different or specific size of business or, or have you, or are you still sort of experimenting and seeing what, you know, who is sort of your ideal client, as they say? Yeah, I really, I, that was what a lot of the past six months is trying to figure out is what is, mm -hmm. and so what I've, what I've realized is that clients or a business that is from five to 50 employees is like the perfect 
set up for me. Um, mm -hmm. I do help a lot of solopreneurs um, also, but really that five to 50 is kind of like that sweet spot where it's like, hey, you have you have needs and you have quite a bit. You mm -hmm. don't have the time because once you get to five employees, you don't have the time to sit there and think about their computers or think about how your email is flowing. You just don't have that time. Right. Once you get above 50 ish employees, the the fun in IT kind of gets sucked out. Yeah. Like it becomes this <laughs> corporate structure where I'm like, I don't really want to do that. Like, <laughs> so. Well, that's good. Well, I would think that there are a lot of businesses that fall into that category. So, so you should be able to, you know, have, have your pick of clients and be able to, to develop a reputation and, and have people um, refer you and things like that. Is, is that, uh, you know, how you are getting most of your business right now, would you say, or is I'm, I'm just, I'm just curious, because there's lots of different ways for people to be able to, you know, promote their business. So. There's say? really, yeah, for me, there's two ways. Um, one, which is the really small way is through my YouTube channel where mm -hmm. like, I'm just like, Hey, here's how you do things. And I try to help people in a free way with like, if, if you don't know how to set up your email, here's steps on how to do it. If you don't know how to do certain things and that's what my YouTube channel is for. So I've gotten a few people from there where they've gone through and they're like, Oh, I can't actually do this. And they give me a call. <laughs> um, the other, but most probably 95% of my clients are all referral. Um, and uh, I think for me, like, that's the way I like it. Like, I, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't really like, like marketing too much. Like, I think it's in, in a lot of ways, you have to be really careful with it. Cause in a lot of ways it's like, oh, I sound, I feel like I'm sounding fake when mm -hmm. I go out and put out a message or people won't believe it. And that's my own personal kind of opinion mm -hmm. on marketing coming through, obviously. <laughs> But I think I, I struggle with that. So really, for me, it's really like I, I build relationship with people and they refer me to others. And that's mm -hmm. kind of how my business has grown. Yeah, well, and, and it makes sense for you, I think, especially because of this trust factor, because you are really in charge of, you know, some very important part of, a, you know, of a business and, and being uh -huh. able to, you know, in this day and age of really of all you hear about, uh, you know, people breaking into computers. I mean, my son is involved in cybersecurity, so I, I hear yeah. from him sometimes. So it's it's really important to be able to protect what you have, protect your information. So um, so it makes sense that that's how you would, would get there. Um, what is, you come up with, say, one thing that most people don't know about you? Yeah, I think so for me, there's two, I really, there's two different kind of sides to me. <laughs> and what I mean by that is I have like a business side and they, mm -hmm. they all like work together, but I have like a business side where it's like, Hey, I'm going to do the work. We're going to talk about your business. But I also have this other part that, um, I really like streaming. So whether it's playing video games, whether it's just chatting with people or it's really fun for me. Like, mm -hmm. and as, as an IT person, people are like, oh, well, you just play video games all day and you probably never work. It's not <laughs> true, but, <Yeah. laughs> but, um, for me, it's more about that streaming and that connection that you get to make with people where it kind of brings in that passion of like, I want to help people and I want to, and I want to help them grow in whatever way I can. And so streaming for me is really, it's just kind of this other persona that I don't in business world, I don't really throw out a lot <laughs> because it's not the appropriate place to do that. <laughs> um, but it's really fun for me because I get to meet new people that I would have never met. And so like I get I get to talk with people about like, hey, uh, and, and that's where kind of that dad thing came from is like mm. people are struggling as a dad. So I get to have those real conversations with them in real time and talk with them and they chat and like in a chat message right. and then I get to read it and respond. And so it's a really fun kind of interaction for me. And I just I don't know. I really enjoy it. Like, so that's kind of a weird 
not a lot of people, if you meet me in like next tech consultants, don't really know that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, the secret's out now. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> well, especially it's, I should let folks know who are listening to this and not watching it on YouTube is you have quite the impressive setup. You have this lovely microphone that's got, that's on a, a bar that is hanging down. Okay. I just have mine in front of me, um, you know, and then you've got the headset on. So, I mean, you really look like the epitome of frankly, a podcaster or radio announcer um, in, in what's been, you know, traditionally that look. So, so you've got to look down. So, you know, maybe you need to start thinking about your thought about starting your own even podcast. Cause I think you've got, lots of different subjects that you could talk about. You could have a personal one that's for dads and then you could have your business side as well. So just putting it out there. I don't know if yeah. you thought about that. <laughs> I, I have, I think it'd be a lot of fun. I've gone back and forth with a few different ideas. It's all about like, what do I have time? What I want to develop right now? Yeah, um, that's true. So yeah, I'm working on it. I do, I do want to eventually. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Well, you'll have to check out my, on my show because I've had, I've had one already guest who talked about podcasting and then I just interviewed somebody yesterday. So he'll be on later on to talk about, you know, podcasting. And so you can get some, okay. get some tips from there. For <laughs> sure. A, I'll check it out. A little, a little plug for my show there. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, what else, is there anything else that you think um, will be important for our listeners and, and viewers on YouTube to know about? You know, anything, technology, balancing, uh, you know, work and, and business, or, I mean, family and business. Well, yeah, balancing work and business. Here we go. Uh, but family and business um, that we haven't that we haven't touched on already yet. I think even just just letting people know that they should have that conversation. Like, I think because I know we talked a lot about how my wife and I talk a lot about how our culture in the U.S. has really been like you need to work all day and then go home and finish your work and then go back and do it all again. And mm -hmm. I think that that the really freeing thing, one, uh, is to realize that work really isn't that important. Like, I, and I say that really carefully because I know some people are like, well, no, it's it's my life. It's what I do. <laughs> but I've told I said this to somebody else and I thought it was pretty good. Um, and, <laughs> but what I said was I was like, you know, at your work, let's if something were to happen to you they'll forget you in two to two to four weeks like mm -hmm. your work won't really remember you past that mm -hmm. like but your family will remember you their whole life and your friends mm -hmm. and i think having that conversation of like how am i like we need to work because we have to provide for ourselves or we have to provide for their for families but what are the ways we can do that and still be with our families and having that conversation with your with your spouse or with whoever, like even a coworker, just opening up that conversation where it's like, hey, I really need to leave today a, a little early because I need to get to my kid's soccer game or I need to go hang out with some friends today and making that something that's OK. And I know in some jobs you really like you have to be there at that time and that's not really an option, but even talking with people and having that conversation is so important so that it's not something that just gets left behind. Cause uh, my wife and I this year had to decide whether we're going to go to a public private or homeschool. And we mm -hmm. went, we actually had them enrolled in three different schools. Cause we were like, oh, wow. oh, which ones, which one do we want? I don't know <laughs> going back and forth. Uh, and we finally decided and unfortunately we're able to do homeschool because mm -hmm. it, it gives us that flexibility but we we realized how much in public school i think and i'm i'm very careful how i want to say this but <laughs> in public school like it teaches i, I as a teacher i hated homework mm. i thought it was the worst thing you could do to a kid um i think that if you have a kid in school and you teach them hey i need you to go to school for eight hours or six hours, whatever it is. Right. And then you're going to go home and finish two to three hours of homework. It, it, it teaches them at a young age that I need to work my whole life. Mm. And that's yeah. what's the most important thing. And so I think having that conversation and talking with people and like, how do we balance that? Because you want to be respectful of the teachers. They're mm -hmm. phenomenal and they, they work really hard to be there for your kids. And in no way do I want you to forget that too. Like that's like teachers, it's amazing what they do. Yeah. Um, but I think that having that conversation of like, how do I help my kids realize in whether it's a model that you're doing or teaching them 
that work isn't the most important thing in your life. I think that is so important. Yeah, it is. I when I hear stories of these kids having like three and four hours of homework, it just blows my mind. I did not have that when I was a kid. I, yes, I had homework, but it usually took me no more than an hour. I mean, it was not excessive. And and even you know from grade school all the way up to um, you know high school, and and even in kindergarten, they they have homework in kindergarten. I'm like. Okay, kindergarten, yep. I remember like, you know, uh, learning how to use a hammer and I would like hammer and we had that, we had, you know, reading, we had playtime. It was not so much focused on, oh my gosh, we've got to get you ready to join the workforce. And so you've got to learn and, and be the best you can be. And um, that's a whole nother conversation, but anyway. <laughs> it is. But... <laughs> <laughs> but I appreciate you sharing um, your thoughts about that. And, and it is something that, um, you know, we need to have these conversations and, and to talk about it. So, so it's good. Uh, and I wish you, you know, much luck with, with your kids and, and doing all of that and, you know, being able to, to manage and uh, because it's not, it's not easy, no matter what, whether they're going to school or whether they're at home, there's still <laughs> going to be um, challenges of trying to run a yes. business and, and yes. all of that fun stuff. But I guess that's what makes life worthwhile, right? It's true. Hopefully. <laughs> like it's a surprise my kids haven't come in and interrupted. Like I'm, I'm surprised. <laughs> well, they'd be welcome if they did. Um, Cause yeah. you know, that's, that's the cool thing about doing, you know, recording. Yeah. I've had, sometimes I've had my hubby open up the door. <laughs> so I'm surprised sure. he hasn't either. So, so we're lucky today. Um, if someone wants to be able to learn more about your company and maybe they're like, Ooh, yeah, I really resonated with what Josiah has talked about today. And I want to learn more about it. Um, how can people get a hold of you? Yeah. So on my website, I have a spot that says, Hey, schedule a free initial consultation. Um, and that's kind of what I would give away to people. So I even yesterday, somebody called and I was like, I, like, let's talk about your business for 20 minutes. Let's talk. And then we kind of troubleshot her problem. And that mm -hmm. might be the last time I hear from her, but we mm -hmm. fixed her problem. It was totally fine. And we did it in 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, so I have no problem with an initial consultation where we get to have that conversation. We talk about your business, where you're at, where you can grow um, in different ways that can make your life easier. Um, and so if, if you want to learn more, you can go there and you can chat with me. And I think I gave you my email. I'm always happy to answer questions, um, or like have an email conversation with people, especially about their business or about being a dad or a, or a parent really in general. Mm -hmm. Um, I love those conversations. Um, and I think they're fun. And so if you want to email me with those, and if you want to talk about your business and how to kind of move forward, I do have that initial consultation that people can come and join. All right. And what's your, what's your website? Yeah, it's nexttechconsultants.com. Okay. All right. Perfect. And I will have that in the show notes. So in case you're listening and you don't have a pen handy, not to worry, I'll have all that. And I'll have your email in there as well, but I just want to make sure we get it out there. So yeah. if someone doesn't get the show notes for whatever reason, shame on you, but that's why they'll have it. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks so much for being with us today and uh, sharing a bit of your your story and, and how you're helping folks with their technology and um, much success to you. And, and I'm glad you're, you're finding your way. And, uh, and I look forward to, you know, maybe checking out a future podcast so should you ever get motivated to do that. So definitely let me know. For sure. And thank you so much for having me. It's always a blast to have this conversation and, and do that. So I really appreciate it. All right. Awesome. And thank all of you out there. I really appreciate you for listening and watching on YouTube. And uh, if you ever have any comments, feel free. You can email me. Um, you can email me at Gloria at GloriaRand.com, or you can certainly follow the show and, and get connected at live, love, engage podcast.com. And until next time, I always encourage you to go out and live fully love deeply and engage authentically.